I welcome everybody on this cold and snowy night. I'm excited. I hope you are as well. I actually saw um, part of this uh, last week. I think on Saturday it was. I was so excited that I did it on a Saturday. So <laughs> I I thought that so many other people needed to hear and see it. I'm thrilled, and I will introduce Dr. Rebecca Hudak. Did I do it? Yeah, Hudak. So, yep. Um, and so I will introduce you to her. She is a pediatric neuropsychologist. She's an assistant professor professor of pediatrics. Um, she has an autism and neurodevelopment clinic. I don't know how, because she looks like she's 20. Um, the, she's <laughs> also part of the Division of Clinical Behavioral Neuroscience at the U of M. And she will introduce the rest of her fantastic team. Take it away, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, and I'm joined today by Emily Goldberg, who is the founder of the Autism Mentorship Program. Um, and then also Megan Pereira, who is our AMP program coordinator. So she runs a lot of the day-to-day -day of the programming. Um, and then Rachel Parent, who is a member of our um, research lab and helping us with all the logistics of, of this meeting. So thank you for having us. And thank you so much for Pat and Jamie for arranging for us to be here tonight. And thank you all for coming. I think we'll start with um, Emily, if Rachel wants to go yep. ahead and start the slides. Thank you. Thank you so much for attending everyone. I'm really, really excited to have everybody here. Again, my name is Emily Goldberg. I am the founder of the Autism Mentorship Program. Uh, that is our logo that was designed by one of our mentees who I think was in eighth grade, maybe when he designed it, something like that. Um, we had a contest to see, you know, who, who could come up with the best logo and uh, that was it. So um, before we, I hand this over to Megan, um, I just want to um, say that as we speak tonight, there's a lot of information. So if you have a question, we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end as well. Um, but if you have questions during the presentation, please drop them into the chat and we will try to bring those up um, in a timely manner. Um, and we will definitely get to more questions at the end. So um, let's move on to the next slide, which I think thanks our generous funders. So yes, uh, our program is funded this year by Next for Autism, the BIM Foundation, and the University of Minnesota. We could not do this without them, so that's why we have a fancy slide for them. Um, next, I would like to introduce Megan Pereira, who is the program coordinator, and she will tell you more about the program. Hi, I'm Megan. Um, like Emily said, I'm the program coordinator, so I get to interview all the mentees and mentors, get to know everyone, and kind of help run the program. Um, one of my favorite things about AMP is that they include autistic people. I'm autistic, and so they like include autistic people in the framework. So the nice thing about AMP is that it offers autistic teens emotional support, a sense of identity and belonging, and help developing their strengths and advocating for their needs. Um, and it also provides an opportunity to help autistic adults kind of get their voices out there, share their experiences, serve as role models and leaders in their community, and empower autistic youth to feel successful. So one of the things that's different about this program than most others is that autistic adults and autistic youth are actively being invited to share their voices, as in, exemplified by me and a couple other folks that we'll talk about later. So the story of AMP is best told by these new stories from CARE 11 and KSTP. The first one is during the initial part of the program. Shop our weekly deals up to 50% off this holiday Ooh. season. And we Shop get ads too, we love it. New deals every week. After classes at Bloomington's Kennedy High School end each Tuesday. All right, I think we're ready to go. A group of teens and adults come together to compare notes. When you get my age, you'll probably be my son. <laughs> Fun and games are part of the curriculum, but they're used to unlock lessons many others wouldn't understand. We're kind of drawing a comic of uh, that's sort of a way for us to, I don't know, talk about things in a way that lets us speak through characters. It's not the only unique bond 29-year-old Derek Baysons and 14-year-old Yari Bishop share. 
Both also live with autism. It's good to just get something off your chest to somebody that you know can hear you and you know is actually listening. Kind of like a friend, but somebody who's older who's been there before. It's that kind of relationship that gave rise to the autism mentorship program. I have two twin sons who are autistic, and one of them came home very upset after second grade recess where he had really had trouble connecting with the other kids. And he said, Mom, nobody understands me, not even you because your brain works different than mine. So Emily Goldberg went searching for adult mentors with autism, but she couldn't find them. Everyone was like, that's a great idea. And I, I just was like, okay, it's not out there. I have to make it happen. Two years ago, she recruited autistic adults to help structure the entire program. Oh, come on. And in January, they launched this pilot program. It feels good knowing I can be Ramalda Mark here. Oh, dang. Like a brother. <laughs> it's something that I wish I had when I was growing up in high school. The magic that we've seen happen in here is more about just friendships and connection and support. Support they hope continues to spread. Just have fun and talk to human. Human. <laughs> huh. Emily is hoping to expand the AMP program. You and can she pause that there. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so as you saw, the initial run of the program was led in Bloomington Public Schools with mentors from MICC, uh, the Minnesota Independent Community College. Um, and the next video you'll see is after the transition to virtual with the, the pandemic, which got a little different, but as you'll see, we still made, managed to make it work. Dance break. A mentorship program to connect high school students on the autism spectrum with adults who live with autism has had to pivot because of COVID-19. Today, our Brandy Powell found out the challenges, the surprises they face, also the call for action. I'm yeah, sure you look a little stressed right now. Yeah. This is Jenna and Alice, mentor and mentee. Jenna is 21 and Alice is a 15 year old student at Bloomington Kennedy High. They both have been diagnosed on the autism spectrum and they're part of the autism mentorship program. What is the meaning behind this program? The autism mentorship program was designed by autistic adults to support autistic youth. Emily Goldberg founded it last year. For many of them, it's the first time in their lives where they've been looked up to as leaders and where they've, where they've been valued for what their autism brings. Teens get emotional support and develop their strengths. We can like kind of like relate to each other. And adults serve as role models and share their unique insights and experiences. I try to guide Alice by pushing her out of her comfort zone. Before the pandemic, they'd meet once a week after school. How is it making a difference for your district? The collaboration has been incredible with our teachers. Now the program has been forced to go virtual because of the pandemic. I wish it were in person because um, then it's easier to communicate with people. But there have been some unexpected silver linings as the program looks to recruit more mentors. We don't have to have mentors in rural Minnesota. The mentors can be here and they can serve people all over the state. Creating even more spaces of identity and belonging, forging a road for future success. I feel grateful that I can help somebody else out who's also facing the same challenges I did and knowing that I made a difference in that person's life. Brandy Powell, 5 Eyewitness News. The Autism Mentorship Program is looking to expand. Yeah, so again, as you saw, virtual switch was a little interesting, you know, as everything changed with the pandemic. But one of the pros, like you heard, is that we can have mentors and mentees from anywhere. So currently, we were able to expand to the seven county metro area. Um, so, you know, you could have someone from the North Metro paired with a mentee from the South Metro. Might be like an hour and a half away, but it's fine because it's virtual. So, yeah. I'm interrupting um, to say that's my that's my son who sparked the program there <laughs> in the cute hat. Lovely boat hat. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, who's involved? Emily's son, Emily. Um, and then we also have um, the autistic youth that are the mentees, the autistic adults that are the mentors. Uh, we want to include parents and caretakers of the autistic youth because obviously they need to be involved in their kids' lives. And the more community we build in here, the better the program goes. 
Um, we have a team of staff and volunteers. So staff are myself, Emily, and AJ, who is not here because they're traveling, and a bunch of volunteers who have made this program a, a possibility and a success. And we also have academic partners from the University of Minnesota, Department of Family Social Science, and Division of Clinical Behavioral Neuroscience. So that is Dr. Hudock and um, Dr. Weiler. So how it works, it's virtual mentoring, like we said. The mentees are high school age, so we set the caps at 14 and 18, and then mentors are 18 plus. We didn't set an age limit for like the higher end of the mentors because even someone who's 50 years old has that much experience being an autistic adult and still has that much wisdom to provide. And even someone who's 19 or 20 that might not have as much specific life experience remembers how it was to be in high school and is still kind of in that stage and remembers it really well. Um, so the mentors, we provide training for them, pretty intense training um, for a couple hours. And there's also training for mentees, but that's more of the orientation of like, this is what mentoring looks like. This is kind of what to expect, things like that. Um, the program start date, duration, meeting dates, times, and stuff like that are all in the works of being figured out. We're most likely gonna start mid to end of January. We're gonna have, um, it'll be one hour a week meetings, either a weekday evening or a weekend, and that'll be fit within the mentors and mentee schedules. And we'll provide a list of topics and activity ideas that uh, mentor mentee pairs are welcome to select from or completely ignore. <laughs> the whole idea behind the program is that the two folks, that pair, are able to just relax, be themselves, and do things they want to do because that will provide a more genuine, authentic connection. So during those weekly meetings, there's going to be support um, provided by myself and Emily and AJ. Um, we'll be in the meetings. We'll, we're going to have folks like go into breakout rooms. That's kind of how we're going to do that in Zoom so they can have a personal space and then contact us with simple chat message, press enter, we hear it. Um, we are asking mentors and mentees and parents to provide feedback and like evaluation efforts, just more of like, what are we doing that works? What can we do better? How can we improve the program? So this year we are hoping to get 20 mentor mentee matches. And like I said, um, from the seven county metro area. So that'll be 40 people total. And that'll be 40 people that we get to help improve their lives, which is pretty cool. So um, the next part is who are the AMP mentors? Like I said, autistic adults, they're 18 or older. They're qualified to be a mentor from the metro area. Uh, our mentors have such a cool and wide diverse range of life experiences, skills, backgrounds, so many different things and interests too. We have a surprising number of folks that are interested in maps, which is cool. I wasn't expecting that, but that I just, it's cool to me. Um, and then obviously represent a lot of different backgrounds and identities. We have a good number of trans and non-binary folks, which is so lovely to see um, because the intersection between being trans and queer and being autistic is uh, higher than it is for neurotypical folks or non-autistic folks. Um, the mentors obviously wanna help the next generation of autistic youth. That's why they're in the program. That's why they're, they've decided to provide their time. Um, and then we have them completed a thorough screening and training process. So we go through multiple interviews with Emily and I, and then also with the research team. And we run background checks and we ask, like we let the mentor or the mentee and the caregiver screen the mentor because it's important that the match will be good. So yeah. Now the responsibilities of the mentor show up. You know, showing up is half of the battle. And honestly, even just being in a space together can provide so much support. Listening, obviously, the mentee might need to vent about their school day or something. Um, and just being a good communicator, um, that direct communication is a hallmark of autistic folks, which is so lovely. And just making sure that they're communicating their interests and their needs, especially because you can't help someone if you don't know what they need help with. And so, the mentors just want to be able to support the mentees as best as possible. They're going to follow program rules and expectations. We got, you know, a whole list of procedures and rules and things like that. Um, amplify and lift up their mentees' voice and experience because autistic folks usually don't have a lot of time and experience sharing their stories. 
And so this can be a lovely place for both mentors and mentees to share their stories and experiences and have their voices be valued. And then obviously support and encourage their mentee to be the best person they can. So the mentee's role on the other side, try to make a connection with their mentor. So again, show up half the battle and just be there in that space. That already creates that little bit of connection before everything else happens. So sharing their thoughts, ideas, and dreams, as well as their needs, like I mentioned. Um, we want to make sure mentees get as much out of this as possible, whatever that means for them. So if that's their thoughts and they want to draw a comic, like a couple of our mentees previously did, um, that's something they can do. If they want to talk about future plans and how to live life as an autistic adult, they can do that too. The whole idea between the mentees is they communicate what they want to get out of it and the mentor helps make that a reality. Um, we ask that mentees commit to the program for at least one school year, just consistency is important um, and that's how you build strong relationships, so attending regularly as well. Um, we ask that mentees do not contact their mentors outside of sessions um, just because boundaries are important and while during the mentoring sessions we want to make sure the focus stays on those meetings inside. Um, at the end, if both parties agree and the caretakers of the uh, mentee are okay with it, um, they can stay in contact, but just for boundaries especially, um, we ask that the only communication between them happens in the program. Um, their role is also to check in regularly with me, the program coordinator. Like I said, communicating needs is the most important thing that we ask from them. And so if they need help with something or they're not feeling good or uh, a lot of um, a lot of mentees and pr prospective mentees have expressed uh, concern about what if I like don't m like mesh with my mentor? What if we don't get along? Um, that's what I'm here for is to kind of help go through those conflicts. And the best way that mentees can hear about that is by talking to me about it. Um, we ask that they complete the surveys and evaluations, just that feedback. Obviously, have fun. The dreaded F word, I know, but the whole idea is that this is one hour a week that they look forward to and they want to come back to, because if it's not, we're not doing our job right. So we wanna make sure it's a safe space. Megan, I'm gonna interrupt for just a second to ans okay. ask, answer a question that's in the chat. Yeah. So someone asked, um, a mentee can only be up to age, age 18. And our answer to that is for now, yes, we are for now focusing on high school students. We started with high school students because we were told by our autistic steering committee members that, that high school was the gr greatest immediate time of need for them when they were growing up, when they really, really needed a mentor because they were thinking about what was coming next. They were often having a lousy time in high school um, and really could have used that support then. Um, our research team encouraged us uh, strongly to start with a, a, a small age group so that we can study how the program works without too many other variables and then um, expand later to uh, serve other age groups. So you know, in my mind, I would love someday to serve kids, you know, three to 101, right? <laughs> you know, it would be great because everybody needs a mentor. But for now, it's it's ages 14 to 18. We, you know, uh, I think for the foreseeable, you know, near future, that's probably the case. I do think at some point um, we may trickle down to middle school, um, especially if we could have um, high school students mentor middle school students or people who have been previously mentored by adults can then you know mentor younger people so yeah. i'm looking to that waterfall effect at, at some point um yeah. here's another question um if i'm understanding this right this program is for areas in minnesota yeah um there's yeah. a question <laughs> the questions above so one person asks is this program open to kids from other states um no we are hoping that actually because we're such a small program and like emily said we want to make sure we expand intentionally um we are like detailing documenting every part of our like how we grow and our framework so that ideally folks in other states and other areas um can copy the structure copy and paste it into a state and start their own programs um the meetings are only in uh in zoom um, not in person just because with the pandemic and all of these things um we've decided it's safer to keep it virtual and like i mentioned before it's a lot easier to coordinate virtually with mentors and mentees that might be from those like outer reaches of the metro area because if they have to drive like an hour and a half for an hour long like mentoring session every single week that's that might not be possible for some folks and we want to make sure it's 
as accessible as possible. Yeah, transportation is a big barrier um, for a lot of people. Um, for for mentors, especially, we heard that that it would just be difficult to get to get to the place with work and other things they have going on. A lot of them don't drive those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, I understand the question from Alicia. Um, your child struggles with virtual sessions. I get that. One of my kids does too. Um, we're, we're, we, it's possible that in the future we may do some kind of hybrid setup. Um, so, you know, we realize that that is an issue for, for some people, um, but for right now it is virtual. Yep. And then just wanted to say someone in the chat um, asked when the application deadline is. Rebecca answered, it's Friday. Sooner the better, because then we can get you through the process faster. Yeah. So. Oh. I have one more um, age related question that that came through is if if your child is turning 14 like in a week or two, mm -hmm. um, we would encourage you to still apply now so yes. that you can go ahead and get through the interview process and things like that. We wouldn't kind of officially enroll you in the program and the related um, program evaluation study until they turn 14, but you can certainly still apply now if they will be 14 throughout the duration of the program, which will start. Kind of probably mid to late June. Great question. All right. Um, our role as staff is to kind of just make sure everything runs smoothly. So we're going to be there at every single session um, of those like mentor mentee pairs, providing resources. Like I said, those discussion topics and activities, um, like activity ideas, and also just like, hey, I need help with this. Where can I go to find this online? We're also there to answer questions. Um, we want to make sure we check in with participants every month about their match, both mentors and mentees, because like I said, one of the biggest concerns from everyone was just like, what if I don't match with, like mesh with them? What if we don't get along? And so again, that's what I'm here for. That's what Emily's here for. We want to make sure it goes well. So we always want to make sure we're checking in and helping everything run smoothly. Um, I will say gonna... that in the in the program's history, I don't think we've had any maybe one match that didn't work out and maybe not any honestly i think that one was just for a medical issue mm -hmm. so i mean it, we you know the matching is done very carefully yeah. um megan spends a lot of time getting to know you know people and and, and moving moving pieces around to figure out who's going to mesh with who um so um and and as she said you know families get you know she, she makes a suggestion and then families can say yeah that looks great or mm, I don't know, this thing about this person might not work for my kid. So we really work hard on that um, and, and we've been very successful with it and we hope that will be uh, the case in the future. Yep, um, okay, real quick, I see a question in the chat. Um, yeah, Rebecca answered, so it's just from January through June-ish for this year and then next year we are probably gonna start in September to go the duration of the school year. Um, and like Emily said, Matching is done very carefully. We have a pool of mentors. Um, I think right now we have like 30 something mentors that we're pulling from. Um, so we, again, we're really intentional about who we're pairing with the mentees to make sure they get the most out of it. Um, um, Cecilia, I totally hear you um, saying the kids with special needs attend school up to age 21. Um, your son is 20 and feels more out of place now than when his larger group is in high school. Yeah, thank you for saying that. I, I hear you. And um, I hope we can expand to serve um, youth like your son sometime mm -hmm. soon. I will also say, um, like Emily mentioned earlier, um, it can be really, really powerful for autistic adults that might be struggling to be a mentor because it kind of forces them to evaluate where they're at and then kind of act as that voice for the younger mentees, reevaluate what worked for them, what didn't which also provides, you know, that I, the space for them to um, realize like, oh yeah, this worked for me, maybe it'll work in the future. And it provides an opportunity for them to share their voices, for them to actually be heard, which is really, really powerful for like autistic folks that haven't been listened to and have like constantly been ignored. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, adding to that, I, I think, I think that's a really good point, Megan, and that we don't expect mentors to know it all. You know, it's not about that. It's not about, you know, being uber successful and having all the answers. It's about having shared experiences, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's, that's really what's important. So that is something that, you know, people with 20 year olds can think about. You may think, well, it'd be great if my, my son or daughter had a mentor, but also 
maybe they could be a mentor. So something to think about. Yeah. Um, yeah, staff are also there to just make sure we're getting the feedback. So reminding folks to fill out like the checkout slips with that like program evaluation um, stuff after sessions and then answer any questions about the program for mentors, mentees, caregivers, professionals, anyone who's interested in learning more about AMP or learning more about how to do something similar in their own areas. So the structure of each mentoring session, that'll be that one hour weekly session. First 10 minutes is just a group check-in, just kind of seeing how everyone's doing and providing those ideas for activities and like the top, the discussion topics. So like I said, we'll have a list of all that stuff and we'll kind of send it out by month. So there's ideas that they can choose from or not choose from. This is kind of just like get folks started when they're thinking, especially with like those icebreakers, because it, it can be kind of hard trying to figure something out like to do when you don't know the person that well. So we want to kind of ease that relationship in by providing that structure. Um, after that, we have 45 minutes of the mentor mentee pairs going into breakout rooms in Zoom. Um, we'll check in on the pairs every now and then, and if there's any problems, they can send us a message, message through the chat so we can see it, but like they still get that privacy of just the two of them in the session. Because I think that's, we all think that's pretty important to creating a genuine connection between a mentor mentee pair. And at the end, fill out that little program evaluation checkout slip, and that's the end of the session. That's what every week would look like. So um, now uh, to talk about the research stuff, I'm going to give it back to Rebecca Hudock. Thank you, Megan. Does anybody have any other questions about like the program structure and design before I jump into some of the evaluation pieces? Might be a, a spot to ask it if you do. Otherwise, we'll have time at the end as well. You can speak too if you feel yeah, more comfortable yeah. speaking, or it's just more efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'll get started, and you can always ask about anything at any time. Um, so, so like um, Pat said, and like Megan said, I'm Dr. Rebecca Hudak. I'm a, a pediatric neuropsychologist and an assistant professor at the U of M. Um, and I was initially invited to this program by Emily, and she was initially forming that steering committee. So she had a wonderful forethought to think about, you know, how are we going to make sure that this program is helpful, that it's working from the very, very beginning. Um, so she recruited myself and my colleague, Dr. Lindsay Weiler, to kind of head up the, the research arm of AMP. Um, and my background is in, you know, programming for autistic adolescents and young adults and their families, in addition to doing some clinical work with autism and clinical research related to that. Um, and Lindsay's background is also in program evaluation, and she's an expert in, in mentoring programs. Um, and so we have found a wonderful collaboration, and Emily's been um, very collaborative throughout with our team as we have been for theirs for just kind of design and, and effectiveness. Um, and so way back in, what, 2016, I think, um, we started thinking about this concept and, and brought it to the community to figure out if this is something that is feasible and acceptable. So do people want this type of program? Do they feel like um, they would enjoy it? Would it be doable? Um, and so we started with a series of focus groups with the autistic community. So with autistic adults, with autistic teens, with um, parents of autistic teens, um, also other just stakeholders in the community that either worked with autistic youth um, or supported them through any sorts of services that were available as well. And so at that point, we kind of overwhelmingly heard what you're hearing from Megan that like, yes, this is something that we wish we would have had. We find this to be so valuable for, for our children or it would have been so valuable for my kids when they were that age. Um, and so they really encouraged us to go ahead with this concept and, and develop a formal program that we could implement. And so um, our initial acceptability study was just with seven matches. Um, and so we did it just for a semester in the Bloomington Public Schools, ran this as an, an after-school program at, at Kennedy High School in, in Bloomington. And we're looking at, you know, is this something people want and do they like it? Is it something that's doable? Are they satisfied? Um, again, I'll show you some, some of our results in a, sec in a second, but people overwhelmingly said, yes, we like this, and we want this to continue. Um, and so then we did a, a fuller pilot, um, which was with 14 matches. And this was um, piloted as an after-school program again, and then COVID hit, 
Um, and so we actually did the last portion of that particular year virtually. So we got a chance to figure out how to transition this program to online. Um, and, and we did it and it was still helpful and people still found value in it. Um, and so we did a fully online program the next year um, and also found that it was really helpful. Um, so currently our next step this year, um, did you have a question, somebody? So this year we're expanding to really establish some of the evidence base for AMP. Um, so we're expanding outside of Bloomington so we're expanding across that seven county metro area. We'll continue online, but we're gonna do this within the context of a randomized control trial or an RCT. Um, and so this is kind of the, the standard in the research world to establish effectiveness of an intervention or of a program of any sort. Um, and so what it means is that we'll have half of our applicants be kind of randomized into AMP, um, and then the other half of our applicants will be randomized into programming as usual, um, which would be their special education services. Um, and so we're recruiting 40 adolescents um, for this coming year, and then they'll kind of be randomized or by chance placed in AMP or programming as usual. Um, if you are randomized into the program as usual or into your non-AMP condition, um, you would be prioritized for the next run of AMP, which would happen um, the following fall. Um, so a few months after this one ends, like Megan was saying, we would look to have your, your adolescents involved and matched with a mentor for the next round of AMP. Um, so we still do have um, space for mentees. Um, so please apply if you feel like this is something that could be helpful or sounds interesting. Um, we apologize that the deadline is, is very soon. Um, unfortunately, we, we connected with, with PACER on kind of like the last round of our um, recruitment here, but if you can send in your application in the next couple of days, um, we would go ahead and get you into this round if it seems like a good fit. Um, so the application, I've put it in the chat. I'll put it in there again. It shouldn't take you too long, maybe about 15 minutes to kind of fill out the initial application. And then we'll be in contact as soon as possible um, to see if this is something that could be a good fit for you. Um, so another thing that we're doing right now is we have a grant from the U of M that's really focused on community engagement efforts. Um, so we are really hoping to make AMP a very inclusive program. Um, we would like to involve as many people as we can from as many different backgrounds as we can. Um, and so we've specifically been connecting um, with African-American, and Latino and Somali families this, this last six months um, to figure out if this is a program that could work um, for families in their communities. We've conducted some focus groups. Um, we've also um, constructed a community advisory board that's made up of diverse individuals um, from parents to autistic adults to um, you know, anybody that feels like they could support the autistic community through this effort. Um, and that's made up of people from you know, all different backgrounds. And so we're really trying to make that a very diverse and inclusive committee. And they really guide our efforts in, in making sure that AMP is moving in the right direction and being inclusive and diverse. Um, and then we have an exciting announcement that there's gonna be a new youth advisory board as well. Um, so we're also looking to have autistic youth help to guide the direction of the program as we continue to grow and develop in the future. Um, so a lot of exciting things happening, a lot of growth, a lot of things that are really coming, um, you know, very quickly down the road. And so, you know, connect with us. If you're really interested, we would love to hear from you and, and love to see how we can expand this in the coming years. Uh, so I'm going to send it back over to Emily here. If you have questions about specific program evaluation things, please send them to me in the chat and I'll respond there as well. Do you want to say anything about this slide, Rebecca? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> um, so some of the results, all right, so that was just the description. So some of the results are, well, all the results have been very promising. And so we have been um, a little bit surprised, but also really impressed with the things that we've been gathering from AMP. You know, initially we're evaluating a broad range of outcomes just to see what is being impacted here. Um, really everything we've measured has been a success. And so that is really amazing to us. And so um, we're seeing a lot of, you know, all of our participants are reporting being really satisfied with the program, um, satisfied with the level of support that they're receiving during their sessions. We're also seeing really high satisfaction with the mentoring relationships. 
So the pairs that have been matched, people are finding that that has been a good match and they're really um, happy with the mentoring and the mentee that they've been mentoring in terms of how they've been able to form that relationship. Um, we're finding increased satisfaction with personal relationships and friendships. Um, so not only the mentoring relationship, but this has been extending to people's personal relationships outside of AMP. So we're seeing more happiness with friendships, more connection with friendships outside of their mentoring sessions. Um, they're also seeing some really nice improvements in mental health. So decreased loneliness, decreased depressive symptoms, decreased anxiety. And we're seeing that for both the mentees and the mentors. Um, and then similarly seeing this for both the mentees and mentors that people are feeling an increased connection and identification with their autistic identity. So feeling like they can really um, identify more with what it means to be autistic and what that can mean as you're growing up and moving towards adulthood. Um, so wonderful, wonderful results. And then some things that we weren't exactly measuring either, people are reporting improvements in communication and school achievement and grades and engagement, things like that. So, so, so far we've been very, very happy with how it's been going. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, so now's the fun, I, I think the most fun part of the presentation, um, where we put together a little video of former AMP, AMP participants who are going to tell you a little bit about their experience. Um, a couple of caveats when you see this, some of the people were in the program when it was in person, so, you know, and some of the people more recently online, so you'll hear about the in-person program here, which is not currently extant. Um, also, one mentor talks about um, uh, she's, she talks about, they talk about the, the power of their relationship being um, that I could be like a therapist to them and they could be like a therapist to me. Uh, I, I just want to really strongly point out that this is not therapy. This is not a substitute for therapy. And we really talk about how a mentor is not a therapist in the training. But I, I left this in this video because I think what they're talking about is how powerful being able to just kind of unload and talk with each other was. So I just want to make that clear before we run the video. Um, and this is about six and a half minutes long. And now we will hear from the, the AMP participants. Let's start with, with Yari. Um, mm -hmm. what, what was it like to be a, an AMP mentee? I mean, what, you know, what, what was the experience like for you? Uh, for me, I thought of it as just, you know, it's a good time to talk about stuff to engage in things because I don't have too many people I can just sit down and say hey I want to draw a comic on this loose paper that I have in my backpack and they'll say yes 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 Yari and and Derek had an ongoing kind of round robin draw a cell of a comic pass it back and forth and develop this really cool comic over the course of the mentorship. I do still have it, just not do you? on my person. <laughs> I still great. have the folder. That's awesome. I kept That's it so, great. so yes. you, you drew comics. What did you did you talk about stuff while you were doing Generally, that? Generally, what we did is when we got there, we would draw one of the conversation sticks, and that would be our inspiration for the comic for the day. Ah. Uh, and we would talk about it as we went on, which usually influenced the happenings of the comic. Uh, yeah. So can I interrupt just to say that the conversation sticks would have things. Do you remember any of the topics? Like we just had a, a, a cup full of sticks. So that might might say, like, what was your favorite superhero? I don't know what they said. Do you remember? Some were like, if you had a power, what would it be? Yeah. Uh, which I ended up translating into uh what makes you special effectively for the comic uh, nice. as that with the main initial character claiming to be ordinary because that's a fun play on all of that that's great um what did you what did you like about the program what do you feel like you got out of it i feel like okay what i enjoyed is that I got to just kind of be myself for an hour and didn't matter if I was being mildly stupid or not. I could just do it. And only I'm going to judge me as harshly. Uh, and I feel like what I got out of it was more practice in a social situation where you just have to kind of 
ad lib and enjoy a normal flow of conversation instead of having a hyper focused topic for some kind of debate or being relevant to a current thing you're doing. Right, really nice. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Bella, what what about you? What did you what did you what was it like for you to be a mentee? And I liked um, how the program was like that you can do what you want and be comfortable about it. Yeah, great. Jenna, I want to talk to you about first of all why you decided you wanted to be a mentor. What was it that appealed to you about it? The part where I could share um, life experiences with someone who also has an autism diagnosis. Because I know I remember in high school, if I had someone to look up to like that, that would have been really helpful for me. Great. Um, what did what was it like to be an AMP mentor? And what did you do with your mentees? Um, one that really stood out um was doing online uh mad libs <laughs> nice. the fill in the word blanks and they were, they were really really fun Let, let's go to you ava what was it like for you well one thing that we did with each other is we constantly vented to each other practically every single visit so i liked being able to be like a therapist to her or to them and then bella was essentially a therapist to me yeah nice um, Andrew, what about you? Well, for me, uh, my view of the whole thing is if I can use stories about everything I've done throughout my life from um, trying to go to more traditional colleges to attending MICC, uh, working and all that, if any of my experiences can be of use to a someone in high school with autism, then I want to share those experiences. I don't know, it felt like a good opportunity to help out with something, which is really cool for me. Denise, tell me from a parent perspective, you know, how you feel that the program benefited Yari? It you know, it benefited Yari, but it benefited me as a parent, too, because I got to see my son blossom in a way that I couldn't help him do, because he finally had people that he was talking to and interacting with that understood his way of thinking. As a parent, as a, as a parent, it is so frustrating to watch, to look at your child and see them frustrated or upset or just just hurt, and they can't express it. And you can't understand exactly what they're thinking or what they're feeling because you don't you don't think alike. And he got into AMP and all of a sudden he didn't have that frustration coming home. He had a place to release that and let let it out and somebody to help him realize new ways to deal with it. And he became so much more social. It was amazing. Yari, did your grades go up too? Some people's grades yeah. went up. I don't know. Yes, I don't. Did. I don't imagine I put in too much more effort than I was previously. <laughs> no, actually, you did. You completed a, a much higher percentage of his homework got done. That's so interesting. That's so. That's so interesting. That's great. So, would you all recommend AMP for, for oh, families who are looking at it now? Yes. In yeah. a heartbeat. Yes. Yeah. Thank you all so much for for your thoughtful answers. Yeah. So that is some of the AMP crew over the years. And now it's time for questions. So we can uh, lose the slideshow so that we can see everybody's faces and, or not. <laughs> and uh, you don't have to have your face on there. That's what we always tell the, the AMP participants too. You don't even have to have your camera on if you don't want to, however you're most comfortable. Um, but yeah, please jump in with questions if there are questions already in the chat. If someone wants to belt them out, that's great. see. <laughs> oh, no. Are all, the, are all of the participants on both sides, mentors and mentees, um, intellectually normal? Or do are some of them have cognitive impairment as well? 
Rebecca, can you answer that one for this year? Yeah, for, for this year, since we're running it in conjunction with that RCT, like this January, June portion will be um, like IQ 70 and above. Um, but then we are taking applications from people not in that intellectual range as well, because we're hoping to have them participate in the next round if possible. Yeah, our goal is really to um, serve people across the autism spectrum. Um, so, you know, um, it, the people you heard from obviously are um, very verbal, but you don't have to be to be um, in the program. And what about on the mentor side? Same. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good we question. Have, um, we have at least one mentor who is um, non-speaking this year. Um, so there's just, you know, they have to be able to communicate in some way, but they don't necessarily have to be um, fully verbal per se. Yeah. Yeah, we had we had uh, some minimally speaking people in the past as well. Thank you. Yep, thank you. I got a question in the chat about the, the non-AMP randomized group. Um, and so, so essentially what will happen is everybody applies the same way. Um, they will go through an interview with Megan or Emily or another member of the AMP staff, um, and then they'll go through the, the study procedures. So they'll get consented for the project. They'll do their initial kind of baseline pre-program data collection, which is some surveys that you conduct um, online or with our research team. And then after that point, um, you're randomized. So it's 50-50 chance whether you're randomized to AMP or non-AMP. Um, and so people in AMP then go ahead and do the training and start the program in January. People that are randomized to the non-AMP um, will still um, will still go ahead and like be enrolled in AMP, but they won't be enrolled in the study. Um, so then essentially they are waiting to be matched for the next round. So probably during summer, um, we'll go ahead and start that matching process so that they're ready to go at the beginning of the school year. Um, so they would just kind of do their regular special education services or whatever other kinds of therapies or services they're involved in. And they would still meet with us, um, I think twice during the next six months to do a couple of surveys. Um, so still that data collection is, is very important to helping us determine, you know, is there any difference in terms of the different things that people are experiencing if they're in the program or not. So that's kind of the value of that RCT or that um, randomized control trial so that we can see, you know, are people making progress above and beyond where they would have normally been making process if they're in the program. And to go off of that real quick, just another thing to add, um, you might have heard us talk earlier about like the wait list or like the priority. Um, mm -hmm. Like Rebecca said, you know, it's important that we get that difference between there, but because we want to make sure we offer service to everyone, um, we're giving priority to the folks that don't get into the program the first time. Um, so for next year, if you don't like, if you don't get into the program this year, next year, we'll make sure you do because we understand how important it is that folks get services. So that's mm -hmm. the only kind of benefit we can add for the, um, the non amp folks right now, but in the future, you'll be able to do it to be able to do it still. Any more questions in the chat that we can address? Please feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions that you might have of this great team. Mm -hmm. And if you have any um, questions that you think of after the fact, or if you, there's just like a very specific personal question, I'm going to type mine and Emily's emails in the chat so you can shoot us a message and we can find a time to talk or email back and forth, whatever works. Thank you. I was going to do that. Yeah, don't be shy if you have any questions. And, and I know often questions come up, you know, later. So um, feel free to email us. We're, we're pretty responsive. I mean, we're very responsive. We're usually pretty quick to respond, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we have the longest email addresses on the planet. Apologies for that. <laughs> if you have research questions, I'm happy to, to take those as well. I'll put my email there. Anybody else want to bring a topic up that they would like to discuss? I hate to let this team go. Yeah, <laughs> we can get some more conversation around the great work that they're doing. Um, just to give a kind of a quick profile of the mentors, especially um, just to throw some interest out there, just to see like, ah, oh, you know, like my kid might be interested in something like this too, or maybe they could bond. We have folks that are interested in like their special interests, I should say, like those really intense um, areas of focus that they like to look at and focus on and learn about. Um, we have musical theater, like I said before, a lot of maps, um, a surprising amount of EDM or electronic dance music. We have, I want to say four or five mentor candidates that are like have written their own EDM, like their, their own music and use like computers to make music and stuff like that. Um, we have folks that are interested in geography. Um, someone's interested in makeup and hair. We have a couple more that are interested in law. Um, a bunch of stuff. Like I, like we said before, so many different interests. And even if the special interests don't align specifically, there's usually a common ground between those. So. Yeah, what's exciting to me about this year is we have a wider range of age of mentors as well because previously they were all from Minnesota Independence College and Community, almost all of them, because it was right next door to Bloomington Kennedy High School. And they were literally put in a van, got in a van and, and drove over. Um, but now we have people, you know, so they mo were mostly in their twenties. Now we have people in their thirties um, and maybe older. I'm not sure, Megan, was it, was it mostly people in their twenties and thirties? Mostly, I think we have one person who's in their early forties, but for the majority it's like, late 20s mm -hmm. average age yeah i think i've seen a 38 year old and a 44 year old are the, are the oldest i've seen so far yeah so it's a, it's a really nice range and they're just they're the one the interviews that i've done or sat in on they're just such amazing people it's really i'm really excited yeah and they have Denise, a wide range of professions uh, did i'm sorry rebecca oh, go ahead i'm just gonna say they have a wide range of prof professions and things too yeah go ahead okay um, I'm sorry. Um, Denise asked about a flyer or a program. We are recording this to Denise. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we will be posting it. I'm not sure if it'll be on the PACER website or how we're going to do it, but we will be posting this so that people can get, you know, more families can see it, you know, as well. And um, but Rebecca can send you some information or Emily or Megan. Yeah, we do have flyers. I don't know how to upload them into the chat though. <laughs> so um, shoot us an email and we can we can get yeah, that sent to you. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. You're welcome, Denise. Yeah. A reminder that the deadline is is tight. So even if you sat down tonight and applied, you could get it done before this meeting even ends if you if you wanted to. And we understand that you have to talk it over and you know, share with somebody that maybe isn't on the meeting too. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, we just have a, a tight timeline so we can get started in, in January, but we would love to, to hear from many or all of you. Um, and we do have we do have quite a bit of space, so yeah. we're looking forward to having, having more applications come on in. And the, the, the application, the initial application is really short. We, one of the, some of the feedback we got um, from our artistic team was, you know, let's not overwhelm people with paperwork. So, um, and Megan has been great with getting, getting everything in an online format. We used to have to send the mail things out to you or, or send you an email with a attachment. Now you can just do it really quickly online. So the initial application really shouldn't take you more than five minutes. Um, you know, there's more, there's more that comes later, but um, in terms of getting in your initial application, it shouldn't take too much time. Yeah. And I, I apologize that this was, we did this so quickly. And in one part of me, I apologize. On the other, I'm so impressed with um, Jamie, who's in the background and Caitlin, who is another team member 
that helped me get this going so fast. I didn't know about the program and I got a flyer from Rebecca and I sat in on the program on um, Saturday. Megan, you were outstanding again. Um, Megan is outstanding. And, yeah, and so I was so impressed. I was doing the happy dance. I was, um, you know, you couldn't see my picture, but I loved it and I thought we got to do something. And so we put it together as quickly as we could. They were ready, but we had to get our team all ready and, and everybody stepped up and did a great job getting this together so we could do it, so we could show you what a great program there is. There's a question in the chat about the research, Rebecca. Um, someone says they joined late, they apologize if you discussed this, Marcy, but is this research study through the end of this school year? I um, six months. Um, so the, the current study will be through, so that like the data collection portion will happen through the end of June. Um, then the study itself goes on a little bit longer just to look at the data, analyze it, look at all those types of things. But yeah, your, your participation in the study would wrap up at the end of that kind of final data collection at the end of this program. And if you would like a copy of, of the slides, I'm, I'm compiling an email now, so I can add your email to that list if you want to put it in the chat. Uh, this is Jamie from Pacer. I can get you all the e emails of the participants okay. from tonight, and I can I can get I can get those sent on. We have to also email this. Um, Pat, you can talk about it, but this link to the survey, so we'll be following up with people too yeah thank you that's Jenny. great thank you i i thank you jamie for bringing that up we really need you your input on tonight's uh presentation and tonight's um activity and um uh jamie's going to put it in the chat so that you can fill it out. We really need it. It's we're grant funded. And so it really, really, we have to turn these things in. Um, so please, you know, feel free. We really want you to do it, but feel free to add your commentary or suggestions or whatever it might be in the evaluation that Jamie's going to put it in the chat. Um, we'll probably also send it out, but please get it back to us so that we can document this. And also if you have suggestions, um, for other things that you, you know, other um, topics that you would like to discuss um, on one of these Let's Talk Tuesdays or um, sometimes Let's Talk Thursdays or what is this Wednesday? Wednesday. <laughs> so this is a Let's Talk Wednesday. So, but we would love to hear from you. And like I said, we really need the evaluations to help us. So watch for it in the chat and then Jamie will also send it out. All right, I'm seeing a question in the chat. My son with autism is an adult. Is this mentoring program for teens only? Um, so yes, our mentees are gonna be aged, like high school age, 14 to 18. Adults can be mentors. Um, even if you're looking for, oh, sorry. Okay, even if you're looking for a mentor for your, um, like adult kid, I would strongly suggest um, encouraging them to apply to be a mentor. Um, I think I mentioned this a little earlier, but mentoring can also provide a lot of support for the mentor, just having their voice like heard and being able to help someone and kind of be given that opportunity um, can really help um, like confidence and all of that thing, all of that stuff. Um, I know Rebecca talked a bit about um, the mentee side of things, but just like personal things we've heard from mentors is, um, really strong positive. So, um, yep. Thank you for, uh, Rebecca putting the mentor application in the chat. Um, strongly suggest even filling it out and we can talk about it later too. Five minutes of your time. I'd love to chat more about it. I, I would just like to bring up another subject around the matching. Um, Linda runs a program, Linda Sherwitz that's on here runs a program for PACER that's been around for many, many years um, and where we she matches um, families with kids with disabilities with residents. I don't know if you're familiar with it, Rebecca, um, mm -hmm. but it's an amazing, amazing program. And the reason I, I talk about it is because what Megan just said, the, the relationships 
that these um, residents make with families that they meet um, goes on and on and on. And many of the people that I met uh, through that program before I started at PACER still keep in touch with me and still reach out. And um, when my daughter passed away recently, they reached out, they heard, they reached out, they're all doctors now. Um, and so it's, that relationship is so good for everybody. I mean, it was good for, for the residents, but it's also uh, very good for the families. And I think it's, it goes to what Megan says about the relationships that the mentor and mentee develop through all of this. And I, I think that's a beautiful thing that, that you can't put a price on. And can I just add one more thing? If anybody um, has a would, is interested in participating in the program, I will put my um, contact information in the chat also. Um, so, and it involves just meeting with a with a pediatric resident or a med peds resident um, to talk about transition issues. Um, and I'd be happy to talk to anybody about that. But it's a great program, and uh, both both sides get a lot from it. Anybody else want to bring up a subject or ask a question before we sign off early? We welcome any questions that you might have or comments. I was I would just say uh, there were a few times I muted some people because of feedback. So I hope there was nobody insulted. And if some I did mute somebody, you can feel free to unmute yourselves and ask a question. Don't be shy. Well, Rebecca, what do you think? Yeah, I think if, if everybody feels like they have their questions answered, we're, we're happy to let you go. Um, if you have anything else you want to talk about or ask, um, we're happy to stay for a couple more minutes, too. Um, it's totally up to you how you want to use your evening. Um, but thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I thank you all again for for. Um, you know, for for coming quickly, for signing up so quickly and, and sharing your evening with us um, to, to hear about it. Somebody just ask a question, Megan, did you see that? Um, yes. <laughs> um, so someone just asked, they just joined. Uh, we are just finishing up, but we have, um, we, we can talk just like Rebecca just put in the chat and this is also being recorded. So okay. you can also get a copy of that and the slides. Yes. Yeah. So we will, like I said, Jamie is recording it. So for folks that d couldn't get in and, you know, when it started, we got you covered and we'll um, make sure that it's available. Oh, there's the website as well. <laughs> Jamie, did you put that in the chat? The, uh, what's that? The, the uh, eval. I did put it in the chat. Yeah, okay. I can. Put it in and can i think uh i just want to make sure everybody does that for oops. us again we sorry i went to him went directly to somebody else but that's okay <laughs> yeah that's good all right there me to everyone <laughs> all right there you go everyone survey monkey it'll only take you a few minutes to do it and we need it we appreciate it um mm -hmm. any more questions for a couple of you that that um couldn't get signed in until later if you want to stay a minute. I don't want to rush off because there's still people that are hanging on. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to lose you. Yeah, and we're happy to, as Rebecca said, we're happy to hang out and answer questions. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron.
There's about 15 people still on. Well, I guess we're signing off. There's okay. there they go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, well thank I'll... you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jamie. Yes, you're welcome. Thank, thank you. Jamie. You're Thank welcome, you, and Thank I will you. get those email addresses to everybody and and, and uh, the to you and and stuff, so you can send out materials. And yeah, Jamie, if you want to send those to me, I can take care of sending out um, the PDF of the slides. Okay, real good. That's Thank you, great. Jamie. Thank you. Right, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you, Pat, you. so much for having us. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. you. It was so amazing on Saturday. I mean, it was. <laughs> I was. I really. I mean it, Megan. You. You were so amazing. She rocks. On Saturday, I really wanted to stay in bed. Okay, I'll be honest. <laughs> and I said, "No, I'm going." And I went, and you kept me energized the whole time. The information it was beautiful. So That's thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> Rebecca. You're amazing, Emily. You're amazing. That's Jamie, true. We That's true. Amazing. So <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you well, so much. Good night, everybody. Uh, good night. Bye. -bye. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good night.